want everybody to remember uh, a friend of mine who, uh, who got killed yesterday afternoon, a great supporter of the airport and a good friend of the county, an uh, American hero. Uh, his name was Matt Wallace. Uh, yesterday morning about 11 a.m., he hit a guideline with an Alabama Power employee out with him, an observer, and subsequently didn't live through it. So, and let's keep Mark Caffrey, which he was uh, one of Mark Caffrey's key employees, and that uh, they'll be able to get through this, and, and God will strengthen them each day and his, and his family. I didn't know his family. I knew uh, Matt for about 14 years when he was working with WSB, and, and just a great American. So let's just keep him and our, his family in our prayers today, and, and Mark Caffrey. Uh, that long. Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa, Alabama, yesterday morning, 11 o'clock, sure did. So, and that's what he did for a living. He, uh, he flew those power lines and, uh, and, helicopters. and helicopters. So, anyway, just a great guy. So, y'all look him up on the bike and get a bow on him, and you'll see what I'm talking about. He has achieved a lot of things in life. On that note, uh, let's get started with prayer. Terry, would you please help us with a prayer? God, we thank you for this day, and thank you for the opportunity to be busy about the business of this county. We just ask that your hand will be upon it and lead, guide, and direct these men and women as they make decisions on the direction of the airport. God, we pray for Matt's family and this time a loss for them and what a loss for the community that, that he will be. Thank you for all of these things that you give us in life. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you Amen. so much, dear. Appreciate that. <coughs> okay. Does anybody want to hear the minutes from last month? You lost six days. Second. All in favor? Uh, All right. Does anybody want to go through the financial statement? <clears throat> anybody got any questions about it? It's attached to the back of your uh, agenda, so I have plenty of time to go over it. Anybody got any questions about it? Okay, let's get it approved. Make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Uh, okay. Fiscal budget for 2015, Blake. Yeah, you've got uh, in your backup documentation the uh, proposed budget for FY15. Um, I'm going to run through just real quick. I'm not going to hit on every line item, but uh, a couple of them that I do want to uh, emphasize. Uh, on the uh, income side, of course, we've got uh, the airport rental income. That's the, the rental of the space in the building for special events and, and things to that nature. Uh, that budget's based off of what we did this past fiscal year. Uh, fuel flowage fee, that's from uh, the FBO uh, ground lease. That is from our uh, tenant, uh, McNeil. Uh, house rental income uh, for the house off of uh, 113 Clark, Clark Creek Path. Uh, the IBA funding, which we've had uh, for several years, uh, assuming they approve it uh, later. And uh, the tie down lease income for tie downs on the ramp. Uh, taking a look at our expenses, uh, a couple things I'll highlight in here. Uh, airfield maintenance uh, continues to go up just a little bit every year. Uh, as you're all aware, the airfield is aging just a little bit, so uh, we have to replace light bulbs and uh, things like that on a regular basis. Uh, the contract labor is for our mowing on the airfield. Uh, we have an arrangement uh, currently with the FBO. Uh, we provide the equipment, they provide the manpower, and we pay an hourly rate for that mowing. And that's, uh, about the cheapest and most cost-effective way that we can get it done. So, uh, skipping on down, uh, liability insurance that has been uh, about the same for the last couple of years hasn't really changed very much. Uh, down under professional fees, uh, accounting, that's uh, Mr. Posey, uh, engineering and surveying, that's uh, additional work we have done on, on the airport. Uh, legal fees, that number has gone up, obviously some, and probably will continue to go up, uh, I think. Uh, Clark Creek Path repairs, uh, again, that house is aging about the same as the airfield is aging, so uh, we have had to do some repairs over the last couple of years, and that's just a ballpark number. We, of course, don't know what's going to break or what's going to need to be fixed, but uh, put a number in there to try to account for it. So uh, that's the highlights. If anybody's got any specific questions about a line item, I'd be glad to, to go into more detail or address it. Yes, I just wanted to know, with the um, airfield maintenance, What's last year and how much we increased it? Uh, last year it was, uh, if I remember correctly, about twelve five. 
Um, so, you know, we do anticipate that it's going to grow go up a little bit each year. Um, it's, it's mostly lighting issues. It's uh, the electrical circuitry on the airfield. All the lighting was installed in 2008, so it's uh, it's about six years old now. And uh, we, we have to replace bulbs on a regular basis, but we do have a lot of lightning strikes, and that, that's one of our major issues at the airport is the lightning strikes. We have to replace the circuit cards and the uh, and the equipment on the airfield each time we get a lightning strike. So. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I'm good with it. Ready to go with it? Move to approve the budget. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Joe, you ready? Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Our sales uh, in the month of July were up 37% from June. We averaged 2.74 transactions per day. Last month, during business hours, we registered 161 takeoffs, 156 landings, 139 touch and goes. And uh, we're in the process of becoming a registered DOD fuel vendor. Uh, there's a whole bunch of hoops that we're going to have to jump through. Obviously, the quality of our fuel will be inspected. Uh, we've taken it to another level. Uh, our goal is to target some different aircraft through the military, uh, C-130s, uh, possibly C-17s. We, uh, we're in the works with C-130s currently. Uh, something that's not on your list and I forgot to mention, flight school is up to nine students, uh, and they're probably within a week or two of uh, the first student being completed with the whole program. They'll be the first student out of the Hawk program uh, to be completed uh, and get his private pilot's license. He does plan on rolling in the instrument. So that's all I have. Uh, Joe, what's the, could you give me the phone number of the flyer instead of the place? Uh, I do not have it right handily, but I'll get it to you. To yes, sir. And the guy's name. Yes, sir. We'll do. Anybody got any questions for Joe? All right. Thank you, Joe. All righty. Construction progress. Joseph. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Joe. Um, the taxiway project, if you recall last time, we talked about we did a punch list walk and they had some corrective action to do. They're finished with that, so we're kind of just on hold for the taxiway project until we can do the extension. Um, the overrun project we started a couple weeks ago on the corrective work, uh, the grading, and they are about 70% done with that. And they should be done by end of this week or early next week. No issues on that, no, uh, no erosion control problems, mm -hmm. everything looks, looks great. So that's about where we are with those projects. Anybody got any questions for Joe? All right, thank you very much, Joe. Appreciate you. All righty. Prime contractors on the corporate hangar. Well, it just occurred to me, I'm not sure they know we've moved locations. <laughs> uh -oh. Well, you want to give us a brief update, Mike? Well, why don't we just uh, move it to the end of the agenda, if that's okay. If, okay. if they come in, uh, we'll get an update. If not, then I can get out of you. Okay, and now it's time for uh, Kathy Hale. <coughs> that be you, okay. Hi. Just let us know when you get ready to start. <coughs> you got five minutes. All right. I'm ready. All right. Good morning. Good morning. And I just want to say thank you to all of you. I know <coughs> everybody sitting here does not, well, with the exception of Tom Cable and Blake Swafford, does not get paid for being on the airport authority and that, that you are volunteers. I have volunteered a lot myself <coughs> to do scouts, public festivals, <coughs> uh, with the high school marching band. So it's a, sometimes can be a thankless job. So I just want to tell you, I appreciate you we appreciate being that. here. We do. Okay. Um, I know that you're you're all really really good people, but I think all of us in Pauling County. I love Pauling County. I think everybody is here. Uh, <clears throat> you know, there were we've been told over and over that there's only a small portion of people in Pauling County that don't want commercial service, um, but. I think, based on my experience, it's it's a lot more. So, as we're doing this environmental assessment, um, I want you, I want to caution you, and I've said this over and over, to be very careful who we choose to do this, so that it's thorough, and that we make sure that we don't have any shortages and there's no cost overruns. Understand that a grant is going to be paying for this. But if there were any shortages or cost overruns, then of course that would become another issue. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of things that seem to happen 
with projects in Paulding County that require additional work. And so I just want to caution you on that. Uh, another thing that, that I just want you to be aware of is, and I'm sure <clears throat> that Mayor Austin and, and Mayor Devi can, can confirm this, that Dallas has approximately 11,000 people that live in the city limits of Dallas. And Hiram has approximately 3,500. Um, according to the information that I could gather, there are approximately 10,000 people that live in Yorkville. There's a lot of people that live in Yorkville and the surrounding community. So we're not talking about just a handful of families. All right, we've got 4,000 students registered in schools in Yorkville. They belong to people. Okay, so just be careful when you're doing this and make sure that we keep the kids, the environment, and everything that that we as citizens cherish about Paulding County in mind. Thanks. Thank you. <coughs> okay, moving along. Speaking of environmental assessment, we need to approve the contract for it. Well, let me give you a, an update on the contract before we move forward, and uh, and I will uh, address uh, a couple of things that Ms. Helms asked about. Uh, in terms of uh, in terms of thoroughness of the of the EA. Um, our EA is being treated different than just about any EA that I have ever seen. Um, we, and I say we, when I say we, I'm talking about uh, Paulding County Airport, Airport Authority, along with our consultants and, and the FAA and the Georgia Department of Transportation's Aviation Division, spent several months putting together the scope of this EA. And then once the scope of the EA was put together, uh, it was advertised in the Federal Register for 30 days. Now, I have never seen a scope for an EA advertised in the Federal Register unless it was a half billion dollar or larger project. So we're talking about something that, that's not no normally done on this level. Uh, and as a result of the 30 day advertisement in the Federal Register, there were over 100 comments that were received. Now, some of these comments were from citizens who said, I'm not in favor of the commercial service. And, and that's fine. Some of the comments were from people who said, I'm in favor of the commercial service. And, and that's fine. But those types of comments didn't, didn't affect the scope of the EA. What did affect the scope of the EA were the massive, massive documents that were submitted uh, by the law firms, uh, Sidley Austin up in Washington, D.C. Uh, the environmental consultants that were hired by those law firms, uh, Nutter and Associates, that submitted massive, massive documents uh, of comments on the EA. So the FAA, along with the state and, and us, had to go through all of those comments and make uh, changes, additions, uh, add things to the scope for the EA uh, based on those. So. The scope uh, originally started off, uh, the cost estimate started off at 150000 uh, Now, as you see in the agenda item, uh, it is now up to nearly 300000 So the scope of this EA ha has, has expanded in nearly twice the size that, that it started at. And that was based on uh, all the input that was received from, uh, again, regular citizens in the county as well as uh, attorneys up in Washington, D.C., uh, environmental consultants, I think Nutter and Associates is out of Gwinnett County, if I'm not mistaken. So there has been a massive amount of input that's been that's been put into this scope of this EA. Um, I've been doing EAs on transportation-related projects for nearly 20 years, and I've never seen a scope this thorough on a roadway project, on a sewer project, on an airport project, on any type of project. So this EA is as thorough as an EA can get. Uh, and as a result of that, the, the cost of this EA is, uh, is pretty expensive at nearly $300,000. Um, it is federally funded. Uh, the FAA is paying for 90%, the state is paying for 5%, and therefore our portion is only 5%. So our uh, skin in the game, so to speak, is, is very reasonable for, for the scope of the EA. Um, However, uh, cost overruns are, are not, you can't have them on federally funded projects. There, there is no cost overrun. Um, if you go over, then uh, our consultant sitting over here 
is going to eat it uh, because if the FAA has not approved it, then, then it can't go over. So it's not like a county project where uh, the county is working with a contractor or a consultant or whatever on a county funded project and, and it goes over and they come back to the Board of Commissioners or whoever and ask for more money. Uh, federally funded projects through the FAA don't work like that. So unless it's something that is that is new, that was not previously considered for some reason, then it's not going to be funded uh, and, and it's not going to be allowed. So uh, I don't anticipate any cost overruns to that regard. Um, the uh, the contract that, that you have here for the services uh, to do the EA is with Michael Baker and Associates. Uh, there have been questions asked about why we're using Michael Baker, so I want to address that very quickly. Uh, in 2010, we went through a selection process to select an engineering consultant to do engineering work for us. Uh, that was a five-year selection. So in other words, whoever we selected in that competitive process uh, received uh, our work for a period of five years. So we're still within that five-year window. Now that expires uh, sometime in the, in the first half of next year. So sometime in the first half of 2015, we're going to go out for a reselection of a consultant uh, for our engineering and environmental stuff. Uh, in that advertisement, in that uh, RFP that we put out, it specifically said uh, to include environmental assessments and other such environmental work that needs to be done by the airport or may need to be done by the airport. So it specifically addressed that, very specifically, uh, in that RFP when uh, we went through that selection process. So um, Michael Baker is extremely qualified to do this. Uh, they do environmental assessments at airports all over Georgia and all over the eastern side of the United States. Um, the folks who, who do the environmental assessment, we have Joseph Snyder here who you see month after month after month. Joseph is not an environmental engineer and Joseph is not going to be doing this work. Uh, they have folks in their office who are environmental engineers and that's all they do is environmental engineering. Uh, they don't come to the meetings and you haven't seen them and you don't know who they are because there's no reason for them to be here. Uh, we haven't done an environmental assessment in the last five years so there's no reason that those folks would have been here in front of you. Uh, but those folks are there, they are qualified to do the work. So um, just wanted to address those couple of uh, things real quick before uh, we move to a vote. And if any of you have any questions on uh, <coughs> anything, the cost, how we got here, the contract, anything else, I'd be glad to address it. I move to approve the contract for the environmental ass assessment. Uh, with the provision of the payment allocation from the federal, state, and local governments. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second. Yeah, Sarah. Second. Second. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> the NBAA conference, October 21st to the 23rd. We do have uh, NBAA coming up again. Uh, it is going to be in Orlando uh, this year. Um, we did not participate last year because it was out in Las Vegas, and uh, we felt like at the time it was going to be too expensive to go to Las Vegas to participate in the conference. Uh, we have participated in this conference, uh, I think, five out of the last six years. Uh, we do plan to participate this year. Uh, we have a, a number of partners that are participating with us in Orlando. Uh, we have the Pauling Aerospace Alliance. Uh, we have the Pauling County Economic Development Organization, and we have uh, Propeller Airports that are all participating with us uh, at MBAA in Orlando. So we are going to have a large footprint. We're going to have a large presence there. Uh, we are going to have a larger booth than what we've had in the past. We typically just do a 10 by 10 booth, which is the smallest size you can get. This year we're going to do a 10 by 20. Uh, we're doing cost sharing on that between all of those organizations that I mentioned. They're all participating financially uh, to pay for that. So we're going to have a a bigger presence, more folks there, and, and we're going to be representing more entities than, than what we have in the past. So, looking forward to a very good show. I do uh, extend an invite. If any of you are interested in coming down and uh, working your tail off for three days at a, at a conference, uh, standing on your feet for uh, 12 hours a day, be glad to have <laughs> glad to have the help. So, uh, I'll make sure I extend that invite out to you. Uh, 
Or you ask the volunteers at Blake, is that what you do? Or you want to pull something out? When is it? October 21st to the 23rd. Okay. Well, we're going to have a schedule change here for September and October. And uh, Blake's fixing to leave him on a missionary trip in October. So we've got to work around that. And uh, so let's talk about it, Blake. Um, the September and October meetings, unfortunately, um, I have conflicts with both of those. Uh, I'll be gone uh, the, the entire week of uh, September 14th through the 20th, which is our normal week that we have our meeting. Uh, in October, um, I'm going to be gone just about the entire month, I think. Uh, I will be in, uh, in Kenya from the 7th to the 17th. Um, and I will be at NBAA from uh, the 20th to the 24th. So uh, that just about that just about kills the month of October. So uh, what I had uh, suggested to the chairman is uh, perhaps we take a look at moving the September meeting uh, back a week or two later than, than we normally do it and uh, just combining September and October into a single meeting uh, unless we find that we you know, absolutely have to have a meeting for some reason. But uh, as of right now, I think we could accommodate both those meetings uh, at once, just moving, it, uh, moving the September meeting back a week or two. Moving it forward, like next week? Moving it back to either the 24th or, yeah. or October the 1st, okay. one, one of the other, one of those two dates work. Right now. Okay. Um, Anything else? Okay. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Chairman, is that going to be good with everybody? I'll be out of town. Okay. And I'll be out on the first as well. I'll we'll <laughs> <laughs> clear the first. All right. But you can have it without me. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, all right, we got one here that says we can't do there. How about everybody else? I'm fine with the 24th. 24th? Everybody good with that? Okay. You need to get that for 24th? Yes, sir. Okay. Blake, are you back from the NBA 8? Okay. Yes. a motion to cancel September those two 24th. dates. No, that would be good. <laughs> oh, no, 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 September 24th. Oh, it's September 24th. Yeah, yeah, the, the NBAA is in October. Uh, we need a motion to cancel those two dates and then reaffirm the new date, 24th. I make a motion. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. So it'll be a 24th. All righty. All right, I need the motion going to closed session now, especially the litigation land after this. Chairman, uh, I, I'd like to give an update on one thing real quickly before okay. we go into closed session, if that's okay. I um, wanted to let everybody know, uh, I intended to send out an email, and, and I think I never got around to it. Uh, we had a, a joint airport inspection uh, two weeks ago uh, with the EPD and Corps of Engineers. Uh, all of you are aware that uh, the law firm up in Washington had sent some uh, some letters to EPD and Corps of Engineers with some accusations and, and, some, and some issues that they had claimed. Uh, so uh, we scheduled a, a joint airport inspection with uh, the Corps of Engineers and EPD that came out two weeks ago. Uh, spent about a half a day at the airport with us. Uh, part of that was uh, in, in the office going over plans and permits and all that. And the other part was out in the field taking a look at what's been done in the airport and what we've got going on. Uh, fantastic meeting, uh, great meeting. We had uh, the head of EPD for uh, for the northern part of Georgia, Ed Johnson, was here. EPA. EPA. Sorry about that. It, it's one of those better it's, it's one of those environmental agencies. Anyways, um, they all left happy as clams. Uh, no issues documented either in paperwork or on the airfield either one. So uh, I think it was a very good meeting and. Uh, Appreciate that they took the time to come out here and sit down and meet with us and go through everything. But, uh, what were the, why did they come in? What was the issue? They, they had received letters from uh, the City of Austin uh, group, the, the law firm up in Washington, making making some accusations that, that they didn't think things were being handled right on the airfield. So, uh, of course, those folks are sitting in, in offices that, that aren't near Paulding County. So uh, it made sense for them to come out and take a look and sit down and talk about our projects and what we've got going on. So. Uh, we scheduled that meeting and they came out together at the same time and uh, worked out really well. It's a good meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for taking care of that, Blake. Appreciate yeah. it. All righty. Need a motion. 
have a motion to go into closed session. Could I, could I approach you and just ask a quick question before you go into closed session? Uh, <coughs> Are you going into closed session for litigation? Yes. Could I just approach you and ask a quick question? You and Mr. Or come up here? Yeah. Yeah, come on. Okay. Thank yeah. you so much. selection process and they were for five years they the engineer record for five years. The reason it's going to be y'all were going to pay for it now you're not paying for it.
Madam Chair, I make a motion that we go into executive session for the purposes of litigation, land acquisition, and personnel. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll be back in a few minutes, guys. <laughs> 